stream. So we'll wait for Carl to give us the go ahead and then Mr. Chair, we can start as soon as we start streaming. Thank you. I'll just ask uh, folks if they can please uh, mute themselves when you're just so we don't get feedback. You're all set, we're live. Thank you, Carl. Mr. Chair, maybe before we start, I'll just uh, I'll do a roll call to make sure we have everyone accounted for. So I have Ali Bertrand, uh, Angela Coleman, Phyllis uh, Merle, Dorothy Hamilton, Doug Thompson, Elizabeth Holmes, Marie Shabbat, Marie Inch, uh, and Francois St. Amour online. Did I miss any committee members? Okay, that seems like we have. We do have more, Mr. Chair. We can go ahead. Thank you very much. Welcome to order then. And welcome to uh, another meeting. Uh, PG out there today. I don't think we're going to get any rain out of that, though, Doug. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, send congratulations and best wishes to uh, Tyann and her husband on the birth of their uh, baby girl. And uh, her name again for under I believe it's Scarlett. So Scarlet. you can correct me and staff. I was I was having a, a memory lapse there for a second. I believe it was Scarlett. And I understand uh, has black hair and black eyes, just like your mommy. <laughs> so. Okay. We'll move into the uh, second the approval of Forestry Committee agenda. There's no supplemental today. That is correct, just the main agenda. So perfect. Could I have a motion to uh, approve the agenda? Nice Francois. See Francois. And a seconder. Well, I see Maurice's hand up. Maurice. Okay, so it's moved by uh, Francois and seconded by Maurice. Uh, anyone opposed? Rather than ask for the affirmative, I'll ask anyone opposed. Seeing none. It's approved. Thank you. Uh, declaration of conflict of interest, nature thereof. Do we have anyone with declaration of conflict of interest? Seeing none and hearing none, we'll move then to the NSC Forestry Project Update PowerPoint by staff. The first up is uh, Tavish. Yes. Tavish. Good morning, uh, members of the board. I am a new forestry assistant for South Nation. This year, we planted a record high of 229,000 trees. So we contracted out almost 160,000 trees. The SNC crew between north and south, we planted 48,000. Over the counter, we plant, uh, handed out 11,000. And municipal tree giveaway, we uh, gave away 10,000 trees, almost 11,000. A lot of trees went on the ground this year, so hopefully we do get some rain. And we do have a bit more information coming up in a report that breaks down some of the numbers uh, for that program. I do want to take an opportunity to give a shout out to our staff. Um, 48,750 trees is uh, a lot, a lot more than we planted last year. This is only the second year we've taken on planting in-house with our staff. So. Again, with, uh, with Cheyenne off on mat leave, Carol led the charge this year, coordinating the program. We had great support from our other team members as well. Naomi Brent um, helped lead our forestry crews when Carol was uh, not available, and Phil took care of um, supervising our contract planter. The rest of our forestry team helped out with um, logistics and crew support wherever they were needed, including behind the and, um, a number of staff. I think we may have someone that needs to go on mute. Okay. So again, a great effort by all to get um, those trees in the ground. Uh, just a couple of updates um, on our Any feedback from someone. Okay. Uh, oops. So again, for the, I believe we're in our third year of um, partnering with municipalities to provide free trees for community residents. So again, this year we use the same um, 
curve style pickup uh, format that we did last year, given the, uh, the pandemic conditions. So we put out a social media call for anyone interested in receiving tree free, free tree seedlings. Uh, they signed up, were given a pickup time and location, and that went smoothly with all of our municipal partners. So we did that over about a two week period. Uh, we did partner with Raisin Region on our few municipalities where we have um, uh, shared um, jurisdiction. Also, uh, in order to celebrate nurses during Nurses Week, we did again this year provide seedlings to uh, three local hospital, hospitals. So about 1100 Norway and white spruce seedlings were handed out to, uh, to resident nurses. And Martin, I think you're up next. Can you hear me, Rhonda? I can. Yeah. Uh, I'll be brief. So just a little bit on the uh, winter's harvest. We had a, a good busy winter. It was a slow start, but then when winter arrived, it stayed, which for this part of the world is a nice thing. Uh, SDNG County Forest, that's the Berwick block you're seeing on your uh, on your screen there. Yes. That was SDNG 11 through 13, the Warwick Forest. Uh, harvested January the 20, 2021, overseen by Bell. Did a great job working with Colin because it's a trail and you know we don't want to make a mess of a recreational trail. So they worked really hard. And uh, I got a couple of shots, Rhonda, maybe you could go ahead of what it looks like. So there's kind of the highlight of it. That's that's short little Phil, who's not that short, but those are some beautiful Norway spruce tucked away in the back corner that we thinned. Uh, the, the contractor could hardly lift those trees uh, that were thinned out of there. They're so big, they're well over 100 feet tall. Next slide. A little bit of an incident right in the middle of the cut. We got that super heavy snow. And Phil and I happened to go in that morning in the uh, entire trail. All the trees had fallen over and uh, Phil and Mike and Colin did a lot of work to get that trail opened up. They did have to close the trail. We obviously were closing it in the sections we were logging, but they also had to close some of the other areas because trees, uh, trees fell apart, but they got that all cleared up too. Okay, next slide. Uh, I don't have any pictures other than the map of this one. This is out by Brettlebane, the Dr. Mitchell property. Colin, this was the last project he got done this winter, uh, thin the white spruce. You can see basically everything that's smooth and green is white spruce, and we did a row thinning in there as well. On That's SD&G property as well. Next slide. Oh, just while I'm on SD&G, just so people realize uh, we're in the last year of the current five-year operations plan. So I'm working with Sabina. Uh, Sabina is actually actively making, a, sorry, Sabina Ade, who works at the county, is making a map right now. That's an old map showing the kind of thing we'll do. So it'll be a map of SDNG, and then you'll see aerial photos of the areas we plan to harvest in the next five years. Once that's done, we're gonna have that available for the public to have a look at, uh, make sure there's nothing sensitive or of concern in the areas that we have planned. Okay, next slide. Was that Pat or is that me? Sounds like it's still me. Okay, so this was the third, uh, the third block, or sorry, the second block. This was in between the two SDNG County blocks, uh, SNC 16 and 17, just northeast of Gravel Hill. Also harvested by Colin, but Chris and Carol oversaw this job. And by the way, as they did SDNG 90, um, almost all white spruce but uh, some nice white pine, but then uh, some ash too, which I'm gonna show you a picture of in case you see it someday. Next slide. There's two old tree markers there. That's Chris and Martin, um, still walking, still moving. Chris and I actually marked that block. Next, uh, next slide. So this is the front of SNC 1617. So if anyone happens to go in there and say, what are they doing? Uh, this was all green ash and unfortunately what we're finding is many of our properties are either gone or getting close to gone. The emerald ash borer is really taking hold in a lot of SNC and SDNG properties. Luckily in this case, after the ice storm, Pat and Chris had got this thinned. And so as a result, 20, there's 20 years of hardwood regeneration in the understory. There's sugar maple, there's bur oak, there's of course ash, but other species as well. So we simply removed all the ash. Basically, it's now a 20 year old forest and one day it'll be a beautiful sugar maple oak forest. But uh, for now, it just kind of looks like 
Well, it looks like it looks. So just, just a heads up, you'll see a few more of these. We've got another one we put out to tender uh, out near South Mountain that will end up looking pretty much the same as this. We really have no choice. Uh, the trees will die, and if we don't clean them up, we'll basically lose access to these properties because of the damage and the, the hazards that will be created. So we're kind of stuck on this. And I think that's it, Rhonda. Maybe next slide just to check. Oh, sorry, one last thing. So when Chris and I were marking, it's hard to see there, but in the middle of that flagging, we found, I think it was four naturally occurring butternut seedlings. So right in the middle, if you see a little pink flag, and then pink flag around, that's the area that wasn't cut. Colin did a really good job, didn't go anywhere near the butternut seedlings, and they're doing fine. Chris and I are actually going to pop in there and cut one or two trees to the south to get a bit more light to the forest floor. Butternut needs a lot of light, but they did really well, and they're naturally occurring. So we're going to see if we can, uh, you know, we do a lot of work planting butternut seedlings, so we're going to see if we can take advantage of this free uh, regeneration that we got. Maybe that's it, Rhonda. Yeah, yeah. That's so Chris sends his regrets this morning, so I will cover the next two slides for him. So just a quick update on our reconciliation and climate change planting that we started last year. So you may recall that we did plant the healing place. It is on SNC 164, which is a property we own just north of Shanley uh, at the intersection of County Road 22 and Bentner Road. Uh, we did plant, um, as you'll see on the left-hand picture, um, did do a planting in the uh, shape of a medicine wheel uh, using culturally significant trees to both our local Algonquin and Mohawk uh, First Nation communities. We do have a sign that is just being finalized. It will be up on site shortly. We have a lot of interest from a lot of different players on how we went about forming our partnership to, um, to not only just plant the site, but to continue building our relationship with our First Nation partners through our working group that continues to meet to this day. Uh, so we actually uh, worked with Forest Ontario to submit a proposal under the Two Billion Tree Program that we're just waiting to hear if there's uh, if they were successful in securing funding for 2021. They've put in for four sites across Ontario, one of them being additional work here at um, our site in Shanley. So we're continuing to build and grow this site as we continue to build and meet with our working uh, group to continue building our relationship. Uh, another piece to that is, um, of course, the educational component that we're working on in the background. So not only do we want to have a site where people can go and uh, connect with nature and with each other, we do want to tell the stories of our First Nation and early settlers as well as our, our own stories from today. So we are working on putting together um, some communication products that we'll be rolling out in the future. One of them being information on why the trees that were chosen were chosen and why they're culturally significant to both the Algonquin and Mohawk. So we'll continue to bring updates as this program um, and this site develops over the next few years, but there's certainly a lot of interest from not only local groups, but we have interest from um, Parks Canada and Nature Canada as well on uh, replicating these types of sites. So we'll keep you up to date as this moves forward. I believe that is it, Mr. Rhonda, for staff update. Rhonda, uh, question. Yes. The, uh, at the reconciliation site, is that list of trees you're going to be there on a plaque. We're going. So our, our ultimate goal is to have um, signs at each tree that will then link to an online page where there'll be resources. So QR code or some sort of technology, so that when people are visiting the site, they'll be able to access online additional information. So that's still in the works, um, uh, but that's something that we're aiming towards, is so that people can understand why species were chosen and why they're culturally significant to both the Mohawk and or Algonquins. Thank you. Are there any questions, Rhonda, or any of the presenters? I certainly congratulate the uh, list of uh, staff that got involved in tree planting this year. That was uh, quite a task. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, the next is the approval of uh, Forestry Committee meeting minutes of March 2nd, 2021. Are there any errors or omissions that anyone's come across? Seeing and hearing none, uh, could I have a uh, mover and a seconder, please? I see Maurice's hand up Maurice. and Dorothy. And Dorothy. Thank you, Maurice and Dorothy, for moving and seconding. And any objections? Seeing none, 
and declared approved. Thank you. Business arising from the minutes. Don't believe we have any, unless there's anything I missed that folks want to bring up now. No. Is there anything that anyone wants to bring up? Business arising from the minutes? Seeing and hearing none. The new business. And I just want conservation authorities. Just want to acknowledge that we have Ben DeHan has joined us while we were doing the slideshow. So good morning, Ben. Good morning, Ben. Angela? Have the, uh, Good morning. Verbal. Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. And uh, can everyone hear me okay? Probably. I think that's usually, Rhonda usually tells me if my mic is off, so that's good. Uh, good morning. The reason I uh, thought, other than to see everyone's smiling face, which uh, is always a, a pleasure of mine, uh, I wanted to come in this morning to the all of the committees. So apologies if you see me a number of times at a number of committee meetings, but I wanted to give a brief update that I gave to the board. Um, last month with respect to where the Conservation Authorities Act update is at. Following the meeting, Rhonda will send around a link with a copy of the Provincial Working Group paper that is coming out on the Conservation Authorities Act review. Um, really, you know, it's such a um, it's such a, a pleasure to see all of the work that's being done and accomplished in areas such as forestry in our particular watershed. We are really at um, the right time, I think, for you know our organization. Uh, we've a, an organi we're an organization that's been around for a long time, and we're certainly an organization that's centrally located between you know Ottawa, Montreal, and a lot of other large um, large areas, and we're seeing a lot of growth and development and um, we're fortunate, I think, as well, to be well positioned with things that we did a number of years ago and that we've maintained for a number of years, including, for example, our working groups and committees that we have. So with that, I'll talk about the updates to the Conservation Authorities Act. And while there's lots of things in those updates that causes many people concern, I think a lot of the practices that that are being recommended are ones that we're doing already. And we'll start with um, the top one, which is the requirement for conservation authority to form an advisory board. Um, I know that you know that we have a board of directors and that's made up of um, municipal appointees. And we have again, through many years, have had the pleasure of working with um, an excellent board of directors and an excellent successive boards of directors that have thought um, hard and been really involved with staff and making sure that the programs and services that we're delivering are in line with what the municipalities require and what the residents of the watershed are asking for. And the second part of that, the board that we have, we have these four standing committees, including the Forestry Committee, Fish and Wildlife, Clean Water Committee, and the Communications Committee that have been around, you know, most of them for about 30 years. So I do hope that there's lots of flexibility. And what I'm seeing so far is with the recommendations coming in this discussion paper is that yes, there's a requirement for these advisory boards, but I think that the committee structures that we have are going to place us well for the future. Um, but again, if you have a comment specific to that, I encourage you to make it. Um, we're going to again send you that link after the meeting so you can have a quick look at the discussion paper and the comments on those are open until June 27th. So you have just in front of the Canada Day long weekend to make any comments that you might have. Um, with respect to other changes, the same suite of programs, the discussion of mandatory and non-mandatory still exists. The province is very much focused on the fact that conservation authorities have an important role to play with respect to managing our water and erosion control infrastructure, or our dikes and dams and other things that we have in place to control um, water in the watershed. And then the other part of it is the regulations program and the source water protection program. And I think I'm hearing a little bit of feedback. So there may be someone that's not on mute. So if you can have a quick look to see, that's perfect. I think we lost that, it's good. 
Um, so yes, so it um, you know we have the the water and in infrastructure control. We have the regulations program that goes with that, and then we also have the um, the programs including source water protection and conservation lands. Um, there are some questions about other, you know, there's suggestions in there about other watershed plans and so forth that are that are suggested. And again, if okay, there I think we lost the person that's not on mute again. That's good. Um, so I think if you uh, wish to uh, have a look at the paper, and you can always uh, reach me. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. But again, the two biggest things coming out of it, I think, to make appropriate sort of remarks on would be things like making sure that programs like stewardship and forestry remain part of the core work that conservation authorities do. I think we can see with the pandemic and the really interesting interest and uptake for forestry programs. It's very difficult when those fund those programs are always only funded by funding subsidies as they become available because that makes it harder for us to assure that you know we have adequate staffing in place and we can provide property owners information in advance. So as you know, tree planting orders kind of always happen the year before we actually do the tree planting. So it's very important for us to make sure we have stable funding for those programs so that we can keep offering them in the way that we have for many years. Um, other than that, like I said, we're gonna show you the discussion paper. Um, I don't think there's a need for a long and winded PowerPoint, I guess, true to form. That's not my, my style. Um, and I think that, again, it's consistent with what we've seen in the past. And yes, still we will require some agreements, but um, we already have quite a few agreements in place. So I don't foresee major challenges with that. And, and I think that um, South Nation is well positioned, especially with its committees and its participation from folks like you to um, put us well in, in the steed for the future. And with that, I'm certainly glad to um, either one, pass on any remarks you have to members of the board and to answer your questions that you have for me um, as of right now and today. So Rhonda, I'll pass it over to you and Mr. Chair. Thank you, everyone. So I did mute a few folks where we're getting feedback. So just check your mics if you're gonna speak, you may be muted. Um, we also can't see everyone's video feed from this end, so if you uh, would like to make a comment, if you could use the raise your hand function, that would be very helpful to help us make sure we don't miss you. Does anyone have questions or comments for you to the presentation? Seeing none, thank you very much, Angela. Easy crowd. I hope that you have an excellent, uh, an excellent meeting, and I'll stay on for a little bit, and then I have another commitment. So, but it is really nice to see everybody's faces. The other thing I've asked Rhonda, um, Mr. Chair, through you, is to, through these committee meetings today and over the next couple of days, to talk a little bit about um, COVID and um, what we like about the COVID meeting setups and what we're hoping to retain versus what we might like to get back to as the practice practices we had before the pandemic, which hopefully could be, you know, right around the corner where all of us fingers crossed that we can see each other in person sometime soon. So with that, I, I hope you have a good meeting and a, and a great discussion today. Thank you. Mr. Chair, it's Bill. May I interrupt for a moment? Yes, Bill. Uh, it may have been my machine that was causing the static because during the the staff presentations, I got kicked out. And when I was kicked out, I could still hear, but the screen was blank and it was staticky. And I think that may have been part of it. Um, I've heard Angela really well. I'm having trouble hearing some others. So just so you know that if I think it, if you think it's too staticky or if, are you hearing me reasonably well? Yeah, you're yeah. coming through fine, Bill. Okay, then I'll keep it as is for now. And then lastly, uh, Archie Byers had planned to be in the meeting today, and he had uh, he's had some severe health problems, and um, I won't give any details at the moment, but he is under doctor's care. So uh, he was not able to join, and, and his wife called to send her apologies to me at, at 8 o'clock. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Good. Anyone else? Seeing none, then we'll move to the update the tree planting in three, three, day, three days. Pardon me. That'd be page 10 and 12 of your agenda. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I also just want, I see Dave has joined us too at some point. So I just wanted to welcome Dave uh, into the meeting as well. 
Uh, so as uh, our chair mentioned, the report you'll find on page 10 of your agenda package. So again, Tavish gave you a quick snapshot during the slideshow. We have a few more numbers for your information in the report. So um, through the 50 million tree program, which is the subsidy offered by Forest Ontario for which we are a delivery agent, we planted just under 166,000 trees through that subsidized program. And La Rose Forest uh, planted about 41 and a half thousand. Uh, again, we plant on their behalf. So we facilitate the purchase and contract planting um, for them uh, on a fee for service basis. We also sold um, just under 11 and a half thousand trees through our over the counter program, which offers uh, smaller quantities of trees for folks that don't qualify for the 50 million tree program. So it was a lot of trees. It was a long planting season this year. Um, you may recall way back in early April, we did get some uh, unexpected snow, which slowed us down. So we started planting at the beginning of the week and had to put it on hold for a couple of days because we actually had snow cover for about two mornings in a row. So it stretched out the planting season a little bit longer than normal this year. Uh, so 36 days in total, uh, 26 days for South Nation staff and the rest uh, uh, was our contract planter. <clears throat> so staff again planted just under 49,000 trees on 40 different properties. Uh, there is an attachment to your report on page 11, you'll find, uh, sorry, page 12, you'll find a breakdown, uh, the number of landowners and the number of trees per municipality uh, that were planted uh, under this year's program under the 50 million tree and the rose. It does not include the over the counter for sphere information. Um, so 82 landowners uh, in Prescott Russell planted uh, in 2020, uh, 2021, uh, 240 acres uh, approximately uh, were added. So for future forest cover, um, we already have a waiting list for site visits for 2022 planting. So Caro is off on a much needed break to recover from a very long planting season. As soon as she comes back and finishes tree risk assessment, she will start um, coordinating the site visits for the 2022 program. So we already have when she wrote this report, 14 landowners uh, on that list. So we do expect to have another busy uh, season this year. Um, as I mentioned, we did offer the free tree seedlings again in partnership with our municipalities. And um, many of the municipalities actually provided matching contributions for us to be able to double the capacity of what we we're able to hand out to residents. And I mentioned that we did give the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the tree giveaways for Nurses Week um, at Winchester District Memorial Hospital, Glengarry District Memorial Hospital, and the Cornwall Community Hospital. Um, as always, our free tree pickups are very popular. Um, with COVID-19 pandemic restrictions, we do have to limit the number of trees we're able to offer, uh, I should say the number of residents. So we try to handle the trees as little as possible. What that means is that we're giving out bundles of five as opposed to a few seedlings each. So that does limit the number of uh, residents that we can provide seedlings to uh, because of the pandemic, but we did uh, manage to give about 100 residents per municipality um, trees uh, this year. So again, they were scheduled times and locations and that all went very smoothly. And we'd like to thank our municipal partners that, um, that helped uh, contribute and uh, provide more trees for their residents. So that's a quick summary, Mr. Chair. And again, um, if you want to take a look at page 12, uh, if you're interested in a by municipality breakdown. Thank you, Rhonda. Any questions of Rhonda? Comments? It's Bill, perhaps a comment. I think congratulations are in order for not only the staff who did lots of extra work, but to all the landowners and all the, the, the persons that came and picked up and planted trees to help us reach the number we've reached this year. So. All of the best and congratulations to all of them. And I know that the hospital people, the staff, really enjoyed getting the trees. And uh, I've heard a few comments from some of them in the Winchester, and I'm sure uh, the one in uh, Glengarry is the same. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> Rhonda, halfway down through on page 10, yes. it says S&T currently has 86 140 trees reserved for Oh, yes, sorry, that should be 2022. That was a typo. I forgot to uh, mention that. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no questions, uh, we need a mover and a seconder. The recommendation is the Forestry Committee endorses the work completed in spring 2021 for the tree planting program by SNC staff. 
Wooer. I see Marie's hand up. Who's up here? Who's down the left hand corner? Uh, oops, there we go, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Bear with us. We, we don't see everybody all at the same time, so we're gonna need to do a bit of scrolling at our end. See, who's it was? Uh, Murray. Murray, Dr. Ben? Yeah. Anyone opposed? Seeing and hearing none? None? It's approved. Thank you. Next is request for approval, land use request by Pat, page 13. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, from time to time, SNC receives requests from uh, private individuals to use the uh, uh, SNC forest for their own use. Uh, I've had two recent requests, one regarding beekeeping and one regarding maple syrup production. Uh, the beekeeping uh, request is uh, to place 10 to 15 hives uh, with some infrastructure, including electric fencing and appropriate signage uh, for such on compartment SNC 64, which is located on lot 16 concession 13 in Nation Municipality. Uh, we would receive for this uh, uh, land use permit uh, one case of honey uh, annually. Uh, this is uh, similar to other beekeeping requests uh, that we have on our properties where we have entered an agreement uh, under with similar terms. Uh, what we do with the honey is donate it to local food banks and uh, in addition to the uh, uh, honey product, the uh, placement of the hives on the, our properties does uh, support pollinators. Uh, the forest is very important in terms of the survival of uh, bees through in the early spring because the uh, trees uh, are some of the first plants to flower and the, the bees utilize these. So it is a good uh, uh, thing to promote uh, as a use on our property. Uh, the maple syrup production request um, uh, is from AB Maple Syrup, uh, who is located in Riceville. This is commercial operation. Uh, it would be a commercial tapping and collection of maple syrup, uh, including all the infrastructure is supplied by the contractor. Uh, the location is uh, SNC 40. Uh, lot concession, uh, uh, it's lot 18, concession 13 uh, in Nation Municipality. It's uh, right along County Road uh, 16, which is the Riceville Road. Uh, A and B Maple Syrup is uh, located in Riceville. Uh, the forest there is, uh, is quite uh, adequate for uh, this enterprise. It's uh, 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 Sugar maple is the largest component of the uh, property. The layout and topography of the property uh, being close to is very accessible and close to the uh, road. Uh, infrastructure on the property, the uh, road infrastructure is uh, uh, well developed. Uh, there is hydro service right along the uh, frontage of the property. So it, it is conducive uh, for this type of operation. Uh, in total, we have seven properties that would uh, be suitable for maple uh, tapping. Uh, we've had tapping on our property since 2003, and uh, uh, we currently, uh, of course, have the Oshman Forest uh, and the uh, operation there. Uh, SNC 21 has been tapped in the past. So it's something that we've done before, and I think we should uh, entertain uh, this request but we may uh, look at uh, doing it through a, a more open prop process uh, uh, and seek uh, expressions of interest for this activity. Make sure that we're getting the uh, uh, best return for the uh, use of the property. So my recommendation is that the Forest Committee uh, recommend to the Board of Directors uh, to issue permission for beekeeping on SNC 64 and that uh, 
further that the forestry committee recommends expressions of interest to be sought for the maple syrup production on SNC 40. You've heard the recommendation. Did you have a hand up from Dorothy? Oh, sorry. Dorothy? Yeah, right. just one question to Pat, and I think I know the answer. Uh, do these operations affect your forest certification status in any way, or do they benefit the forest certification, or are they benefiting from the forest certification? We benefit uh, since we already have existing operations, uh, really, uh, similar operations on our property. They are included within the FSC certification uh, process. Uh, the maple syrup production has the opportunity to become FSC certified by uh, uh, operating in an FSC uh, certified forest. Okay, and just one last question. The monies derived from, uh, aside from the uh, one case of honey, uh, do these monies go back into forest, uh, forest operations? They're included in the uh, SNC forestry budget. Okay. Question for Bill. Hi, uh, Maurice, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, are they boiling on site or they're just collecting the sap? Just collecting. Okay. They take it back to their commercial facility. Okay. Thank you. Bill? And it's Bill now, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I know what's happening with this tap at the Oshman, and I know the dollars that we've gotten back uh, last year, and I suspect there's some coming this year. I'm not sure about the Sand Road, but what kind of parameters would we have around that? Would that be recommendations forthcoming as we find out who might be interested in how much work they have to do? That is correct. That's Thank why you. the value is uh, to be determined. As Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Well, just for information, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, Pat will check me on this, but I think we got between four and five thousand dollars last year from the SAP from the Oshman Forest. Does that sound correct, uh, Pat? Uh, that is correct. Uh, this year wasn't quite as uh, uh, it wasn't as good a, a maple syrup year, so uh, the revenues are down slightly. Thank you. But do we uh, get paid based on leaders or do we get paid based on tax? Um, we've had both systems in, in place. Uh, Oshman Forest is uh, uh, is by volume and uh, Sand Road was by tap. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, Ben has his hand up. Oh, Ben, go ahead. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to mention that at the county, we've just entered into an agreement with that producer for um, tapping at one of our uh, forests, and it was based on tap. and. Uh, uh, you know, I think for us, it's a very positive, um, you know, expansion of the use of that forest. And we look forward to uh, seeing how things go next year and into the years beyond. We had a 10-year uh, lease with an option to renew for an additional five years. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I can use this screen. <laughs> yeah. Seeing none, you've heard the recommendation. I need a uh, mover and a seconder. Oh, I have Doug's hand Doug, up. Stand up. And a seconder. Uh, Dorothy. Dorothy. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Seeing and hearing none, it's approved. Thank you very much. Uh, the next is the funding submissions, page 14 to 16. That would be Rhonda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we haven't brought this report in a while to Forestry Committee, but it's one that we do bring to our Fish and Wildlife Committee, which I thought would be of interest. So as you know, um, many of our programs do rely on external funding and grants to support some of the work that we do. 
And we spend a lot of our time um, filling out funding applications and we're actually quite successful in what we see in returns um, for funding coming in. So in your report, you'll see a snapshot of just since January, um, what we've submitted. Uh, we do have uh, good news on some, not so great news on other, and still waiting for uh, some decisions on a few programs. So um, we were recently approved under the Grassland Ontario uh, Grassland Stewardship Initiative to do some work um, enhancing our grassland habitat on SNC 164, which happens to be the southern portion of the property on which the healing place is, is planted. So just under $18,000 approved for that, um, that site. We did submit um, an Ontario Power Generation Biodiversity Proposal for three years under that program. So you may recall we're in the middle of a three-year agreement right now. We're in year two. Uh, with work happening in Tweed and our Gamble and Garland side road properties. Uh, so there was another call that was issued uh, early in the new year and we did apply for an additional three years. Uh, however, because we're in uh, the middle of a current agreement, uh, we were not uh, funded as high for the first uh, two years of the program, but we were successful in securing an additional three years. So in 2021 and 22, the $5,000 is supporting um, development uh, of our Healing Place site. And um, year three, 2023, the $50,000 uh, we have earmarked for some shoreline stabilization and planting at Oak Valley. Uh, we're actively seeking additional external funds to match to that 50,000 to be able to do um, the work that's required at that site. So we do have a bit of lead time uh, to secure some additional external funding for the 2023 project under that program. Uh, we have a uh, forest bird monitoring um, project into Habitat Stewardship uh, Program. It's a smaller grant, 6,000. Uh, that went back in early March and we're still waiting for a decision. Uh, the National Disaster Mitigation Program, um, this is our sixth intake applying for projects. We've been very successful in the past. Uh, we submitted five projects this year, uh, was approved for three of them. So we were approved for floodplain and hazard mapping on the Bear Brook uh, and tributaries in partnership with the City of Ottawa, on the Ottawa River flood hazard mapping project uh, with the United Counties of Prescott Russell, and a flood risk partnership assessment partnership, which is a partnership between ourselves, Rideau, uh, and Mississippi Conservation Authorities to undertake flood risk assessment in our jurisdictions. So the amounts that were approved were uh, just under 266,000 for Bear Brook, just over 170,000 for uh, Ottawa River, and uh, just under 169,000 for the flood risk assessment. So matching contributions coming um, through South Nation and the partners for those projects. Uh, Eco Action Community Funding Program um, was one of the ones that we hoped we might get some matching funds for Oak Valley, and fortunately we were not successful uh, in that one. Um, a new one that we hadn't applied to before called Smart Great Lakes Mini Grants Program. We had a landowner uh, along the St. Lawrence River that was interested in partnering with us to put a uh, river laboratory. Unfortunately, that one was denied as well. Uh, Nature Fund Canada. We continue to apply to this one. It's, uh, it is a national program, so it is tough to secure funding. Um, they do fund land securement, so we continue to try to uh, to find some matching funds out of that program. Uh, we're not successful this time and we'll continue to, uh, to pursue that one as we can. Um, we submitted a small application for 2021 projects under the Two Billion Tree Program. It was approved, so we'll be doing some fall tree planting on SNC 7, which is a property that we harvested last year, uh, just under 17,000 approved for that program. Uh, La Flesh Environmental Fund for land acquisition, we have a uh, submission in and it's still pending a decision with a request for $250,000 to support our land securement program. We did apply and were not successful for bridge replacement at Warwick Forest through SDNG's Regional Tourism Grant. It was a small request. Uh, we have a red Rural Economic Development Program application in for shoreline restoration and washroom replacements. Uh, it was submitted the end of March for just uh, over 35,000 and that one is still pending. We were successful through UCPR's uh, Waterfront Tourism Development Fund for some work at St. Albert Park uh, and dock improvements for $4,000 that was approved. Uh, Fisheries and Oceans Canada uh, is, uh, has been seeking proposals for a number of years and we've been successful um, pretty much every year in the past receiving some funding for classifying unrated municipal drains. So again, this allows our staff to go in 
classify the drains and it helps speed up the process for um, drain superintendents when they're looking to do cleanouts. So we just recently submitted that one a few weeks ago for $10,000 and we're still waiting for a decision on that one. The Ontario Community Environment Fund, uh, we're in the process of uh, completing that grant application. It's for East York Creek shoreline stabilization. Uh, it'll be a $40,000 request and it's due the 23rd of this month. And uh, one that's going in this week that Pat's working on is a Climate Action Awareness Fund for SNC Forest Inventory and Carbon Models. Uh, that's currently in progress with a request uh, in the neighborhood of 425,000. So I've given you a little summary on the bar in the middle of page 16. So again, we have two submissions in progress requesting about 465,000. We have four submissions we're still waiting for answers on at just over 300,000. We have seven approved at just over $703,000 and we have six submissions, unfortunately, that were not approved. Um, the total looks high, but it was a couple of very, very large requests. So 1.2 million, um, again, a couple of those were under the National Disaster Mitigation Program and one was the large land securement that uh, kind of drives that denied value up. So I do see Dorothy's hand up, Mr. Chair. I'm happy to take questions. Dorothy, you have a question? Yeah, Rhonda, I don't know if this applies to your Climate Action Awareness Fund or not, but I was on a Zoom conference last Friday with a Martin Monstert. I think he's out of Guelph or out of Brock. Um, he was doing a presentation uh, on afforestation and reforestation in southern Ontario, ways to mitigate. And um, unfortunately, it was a bad, uh, bad connection. We Most of us missed his presentation. We were there for the discussion. But uh, he said he was coming down to South Nation to do some work this summer. Is that part of any of these projects? I'm going to defer that one to Pat because he's actually been the one working on that proposal. Yeah, I really can't answer that question. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with the gentleman uh, question. Uh, I, we are working with the uh, Ontario Woodlot Association. I've been in contact with uh, the executive director there. Uh, they are working on a larger project to uh, capture forest inventory data for all of southern Ontario and uh yeah, yes we're working with the uh if he's connected through that project it's quite possible that it uh, okay okay because i didn't hear it through through the ontario woodlot association he didn't he didn't seem to be with us but i can go back and talk with john pino and clarify that if not i can give you his email address and his presentation if you would like uh, so maybe yes, you can please. check in, but he he did say he was coming to South Nation Conservation this summer. So I thought you might know. Well, we'll <laughs> you might want to know. We'll look forward to his visit then. <laughs> if you could share that information, uh, Dorothy, that'd be uh, great. Yeah, I will. Thank you, Dorothy. Bill. It's Bill. Have may I make a couple of comments and ask a few questions? Go ahead, Bill. Okay, first I want to say, and you've noticed that the staff needs to be complimented and the board is very pleased with the staff initiative that gets out and looks for and applies for and goes after these grants and uh, states um, in their requests, really good reasons for them. And we've been reasonably successful. My questions now have to do with when we have one denied, do they send us any comments that tell us why or give us any advice as to how we might better apply in the future? Yes, yeah, so we do follow up, especially with those larger requests to find out um, why they were not approved. Uh, many of the national programs are just overwhelmed with applications, so it is very tough competition and sometimes we don't fall in one of their high priority areas. Uh, but we do wherever we can um, speak to a program representative to see where we can better applications for future submissions. Thank you. And supplementary, um, of the dollars requested on the two submissions that are in progress, I'm looking at page 16, and I like this summary page, by the way, and also the, the four submissions that are there and the approved submissions. Um, are these 100% or a percentage? And do we have dollars in the budget or do we have to uh, appropriate anything differently? Or how do we know about that? Uh, so as far as what's in budget, what's not, Bill, is that your question? 
Yes. Um, do we have is some of our budget assigned to these projects as we get them, or do we have to find those dollars, or are they? I'm sure they all are not a hundred percent. Oh, okay, so I see what you mean. Yeah, so some some are we do require matching percentages. Uh, surprisingly, this year there were quite a few grants that went out that were up to 100% funding, which is somewhat unusual. But we did see more of those come out. Now, of course, um, although they don't require matching funding, they um, rate higher if you do have matching. So we uh, we work with our partners. So in some cases we have municipalities providing matching dollars. In some cases we're able to lever other external partners. And then for our matching contributions comes from um, usually from staff uh, component that's already in budget. So, so of the approved submissions and the ones that are pending and the ones we're going to submit, uh, we ha if, if we know it's 50% or 80% or whatever it is, we know that we have the dollars if we get it to be able to go ahead, correct? Yes, that's correct. And, and we do have a budget page specifically that deals with external funding where we do forecast um, anticipated revenue based on previous uh, funding applications. So we do have a placeholder. We've, we've already uh, exceeded that uh, placeholder though. So um, we do budget for uh, external funds every year, uh, knowing that we have a fairly high success rate as far as securing funds. So I would finish, Mr. Chair, by repeating what I started with, and that was congratulations and thanks to the staff for their initiative and their uh, reviewing of finding out and planning for these projects because it sure supplements our budget. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Just I noticed on, when I look at the figures on page 16 that the uh, staff have submitted requests for Two million seven hundred and seventeen thousand four hundred thirty-six dollars. That's a terrific dollar figure. You uh, and you've, uh, with in progress, pending or approved, you've got one point five million there. So that's great. Yes. Congratulations. Seeing no other hands up, the recommendation is the Forestry Committee receive and file the grant submission update. I have a mover and a seconder, please. If Doug, Doug moved. And is that the. Uh, uh, Maurice has his hand up. So moved by Doug, seconded by Maurice. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, approved. Thank you. Next is uh, Grassland Initiative SNC 164, and that would be PATH, and it would be page 17. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this was mentioned in that long list of uh, grant application. Of course, we were successful. Um, uh, SNC 164, as you know, is our, our, the home of our uh, healing uh, uh, forest. And uh, that property was do uh, a partial donation to SNC uh, from the previous landowner through the Ecological Gifts Program. And when we did the assessment for the property, we found that there were two species at risk birds uh, on the property, the bobolink and uh, eastern meadowlark. Um, that habitat was maintained through the efforts of the previous landowner by annually uh, harvesting the hay off his uh, property uh, in a late harvest uh, uh, cutting regime. Um, so we thought we would, uh, we have to maintain those, uh, uh, the uh, property for those species and uh, we applied for this Grasslands Ontario initiative. Uh, what we will do is complete an inventory and assessment of the site. The first inventory is uh, scheduled for June 18th um, this year and then develop a harvest uh, plan for the hay and uh, a management plan for the hay uh, crop and uh, do uh, long-term monitoring in terms of the effectiveness of that management plan. Um, the financial support will enable SNC to maintain the grassland habitat through a bird-friendly hay harvesting schedule. Uh, since the time we applied for that uh, grant, uh, we were approached by Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada 
to partner on the project with us. And they bring in a lot of uh, uh, some additional uh, financial support, but uh, also a wide range of in-kind technical expertise in botany, uh, ornithology and crop science that will help us uh, have a successful property there. Uh, I do have a meeting with them later on this afternoon to actually uh, start to put down a, uh, a schedule for the, their activities on the property in support of our project. Uh, one of their special interests is the protection of uh, Canada's genetic resources by through in situ production of uh, grassland and hedgerow uh, crops that are uh, important uh, sources of genetic material for agriculture. So that's just a brief update on the project and it's uh, currently underway. Any questions? Uh, I did have to look up ornithology. <laughs> birds. Yes. Random <laughs> zoology, study of birds and their natural habitat. So. I learned, learned something when I was going through this. <laughs> yeah. In situ, could you explain that? Um, Canada has a program of uh, protecting its genetic resource by uh, collecting and maintaining uh, a seed bank. Uh, there are several across the country. Uh, one of the big, large uh, agricultural seed banks is in uh, Western Canada. Uh, one of the problems they see with that is that, uh, yes, it's fine, they can put these seeds away, but the environment is constantly changing, and so are the uh, uh, genetics of the uh, plant material. Uh, so what they're looking at is uh, these uh, sources for genetic material is actually growing them out in the wild where they occur naturally, and uh, taking inventory and protecting those uh, uh, plant materials in place so that the genetic uh, uh, the genetics can evolve over time and uh, it's just another uh, way of protecting uh, our genetic resources. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no hands, the recommendation is the Forestry Committee receive and file the Grassland Initiative. SNC 164 update. You need a mover and a seconder, please. Do we have a mover and a seconder for this recommendation? See Doug. Moved and by ben. Doug. And seconded by uh, Ben. Ben. Anyone opposed? Seeing so none, it's approved. Thank you. The next is the Forestry Committee received and filed the 2021 first quarter harvest update. And this also would be Pat. Yes, the, the report is on uh, page 18. Uh, there's a table there that just summarizes the, uh, uh, the harvest that uh, Martin showed in the uh, uh, slideshow. Uh, these are just the statistics for that. Uh, the first one is uh, SNC 1617. Uh, it was a, a uh, harvest in uh, a white, uh, white spruce plantation. Uh, our estimated volume was 561 uh, cubic meters. Uh, we uh, actually harvested over a thousand uh, uh, cubic meters, um, and it was on 10 acres. The fuel wood uh, estimate was uh, es uh, incidental, um, but when we, as Martin explained, once we got into the stand and saw the damage that was uh, uh, being caused by the emerald ash borer, the harvest was mal uh, uh, modified and we actually harvested uh, most of the uh, uh, ash in those stands. Total revenue for that operation was uh, just over $14,000. Uh, SDG 1112-13 uh, uh, was uh, 
a, a mixed conifer plantation. Uh, you see the uh, estimated and actual volumes there uh, and the revenues received. Of course, we did uh, SD and G90 late in the year. Uh, that's still a projected uh, income figure there. We're just uh, balancing the uh, books on that one right now, but it'll be close, very close to that. So in uh, uh, terms of the first quarter in uh, S on the uh, SD and G uh, uh, forest uh, revenues are just uh, uh, under twenty four thousand dollars. Question from Dorothy, Mr. Chair. Dorothy, you have a question? Yeah, I'm just uh, wondering: Are you seeing or anticipating any increase in um, your bids uh, due to the the lumber market right now or the wood market? We've seen uh, increases in the uh, hardwood prices that the mills of uh, uh, have been offering. Uh, softwood uh, markets are, uh, uh, particularly with the, the spruce, uh, um, have been fairly stable. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, so am I reading this right at the approximately $38,000 in total? The combination of 14 plus 24? Uh, the SNC revenue is separate for, uh, from the uh, SDNG revenues. The revenues for SDNG go directly to the county. Thank you. It just summarizes our operations. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Don't see any more hands. Any more? So the recommendation is the Forestry Committee receive and file the 2021 first quarter harvest update. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Maurice. Maurice. And Dorothy. And Dorothy. So it's moved by Maurice, seconded by Dorothy. Any opposed? Recommendations approved. Thank you. The next is begin path for discussion the 2022 budget. That's on page uh, 20. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we always try to get the uh, give the uh, forestry committee some input into the uh, budget process. That's uh, uh, later on in the, in the year. Uh, typically starts in August, September uh, with our first discussions, uh, which uh, uh, we'd like to bring this early to the committee so uh, you can uh, have some input into what our numbers are. I, I've put a chart in, in the uh, uh, report uh, showing the uh, 2020 actuals, our 2020 budget, and the current uh, expenses as of uh, the end of last month, and uh, just extrapolated that uh, as a draft uh, status quo uh, budget for uh, 22. It's just for discussion purposes at this point. Um, the forestry budget and activities on the SNC forest is uh, comprised of two components. One, uh, the monies that are set aside for the management of our lands, uh, uh, excluding the uh, uh, the SNC parks, which are uh, budgeted separately, and then the SNC forest operations uh, combined, those two uh, uh, make the make up the monies available for management of our uh, of the SNC forest. Um, there's comments about the uh, SNC uh, forest revenues, um, what it's actually uh, uh, was received last year, and uh, what we anticipate for this year, and a projection for uh, next year. Um, 
The other aspect of the SNC Force is our Force Stewards Program. Uh, we that program has um, uh, been quite effective. Uh, we had a, a recent encroachment on our properties, which was reported through the Forest Stewards Program, and we were able to take immediate action. Uh, just a reflection of the uh, numbers on our properties. We have 170 parcels of land now, uh, and uh, 22 volunteers who are currently assigned to 42 of those 170 properties. So there's a lot of opportunities, and I think we can uh, uh, gain some support uh, from other volunteers through uh, uh, some communications around the opportunity that is available to participate in the management of the forest. So it is for discussion, uh, and I'd entertain any uh, uh, comments or questions uh, from the committee. Comments or questions? Mr. Chair, through oh. you, it's Bill. Uh, I, I heard 170 parcels of land and 42 properties have volunteers. How many volunteers were there? Because I like the idea of the volunteers, and I agree with you that we should be looking for more. There, there are currently 22 uh, volunteers assigned. Some of them have multiple properties, uh, and they are, are assigned to 42 properties. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? So maybe we'll have more comments coming back uh, before or after September meeting. So the recommendation is the Forestry Committee review and provide any comments prior to the September 7th, 2021 committee meeting. I need a mover and a seconder, please. A mover and a seconder for this recommendation. Murray. Murray, moved, seconded by? Uh, Doug. Doug, thank you very much. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, thank you very much. Approved. Supplemental agenda, we have none. Do not. <clears throat> Correspondence, we have the uh, gypsy moth and the summer of 2021, what to expect and what to do, 22 to 25. Just included that for the committee's information. I know that there were a lot of questions and um, a lot of um, uh, information floating around last year in the Gypsy Moth. So that's just included for your information. Thank you. Any comments for those of you, Dorothy? Um, I don't know if anybody else had the same problem, but the links don't seem to work. I don't um, know if you can redo that mess or redo that uh, letter or not. The info ones work, but the ones that click to the maps and whatnot don't seem to. If there's another place that that letter exists, it would be nice to maybe send out a link to it. Okay, I'll take a look. I'm not sure if the version that we received by email, if the links were working. Um, if they are, what I can do is upload maybe to the members page and see if that uh, might help. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none. We move to uh, item 10, roundtable discussion, community <clears throat> engagement. With COVID-19, I'm not sure how much community face-to-face -face engagement people may have had, but you may have had other opportunities. It's a quiet crowd today. Doug. Go ahead, Doug. I had a, I had a question for Rhonda. In the uh, uh, tree on, on the uh, sh uh, page that showed the uh, uh, tree giveaways uh, by municipalities uh, for Ottawa, 
it just listed Ottawa. Is there a breakdown there uh, with the what particular area, or is it just generally Ottawa? Um, get for you does a breakdown by ward once uh, Carol is back from the holidays. So that would be um, all of the city of Ottawa for us. Um, again, keeping in mind also that they would be part of the um, the Green Acres program as well. So again, we're delivering um, that program on behalf of the city, which uh, has some additional costs for landowners in addition to the 50 million tree program. So we can get you a breakdown, Doug, by ward. Yeah, uh, just interested. And so just uh, just for clarification, we had the uh, the. the giveaway uh, of uh, trees and bushes uh, uh, is that I just I wasn't sure if that was the same thing uh, as we've had to previous where residents came to for example Medcalf and picked up uh, or is that something that's going to happen in the fall so this year we did run them in the spring um, in each of our three Ottawa wards. So they were, as were the other municipalities, um, applicants that were interested submitted their names and we were able to do about 100 residents per ward. So again, those individuals were, were provided a pickup time and location. So uh, because of the pandemic, we're not able to do some of our uh, regular type of giveaways where we have in the past, for example, with Finley Creek had the, um, the shrub giveaway during some of their community events. Uh, with the pandemic, we've kept to a curbside model where um, only the participants that are receiving trees receive the information on where to pick them up and at what time. Okay, thank you. I just didn't see the the, uh, the information for Osgood Ward that made it, uh, maybe I missed it. Uh, uh, I, can, I can get that information from Kelsey. She coordinated the municipal okay. treatment. Okay, uh, yeah, if you wouldn't mind doing that. Uh, thanks that very much. Well. Uh, I, have, I have one further question for Pat. Uh, and this is regard to the South Nation property on Grays, just off of Grays Creek Road. Uh, is there, I think you had mentioned that there is the possibility that the, we've been able to gain access to that property, uh, that there may be some work at uh, making that a site where people could walk through. Is there any, any further movement on that? Uh, not yet, uh, Doug. I... Uh... Would like to go out to the property myself and uh, walk it and uh, uh, check the access uh, routes out. Uh, I can do that within the next week. Uh, sure. How yeah, about I give you a call and give you an update? Uh, yeah, update. yeah. There's no rush, and uh, if uh, if you do have a time that you're coming, uh, maybe you could just uh, flip me an email, and uh, I, I wouldn't mind taking a, uh, a walk with you or uh, sure. at some point. Too. Okay, thanks very much. Dorothy, you have a question? Dorothy, go ahead. You're still on mute. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, this is where we can say upcoming events? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, on, I guess, uh, maybe probably a lot no, but on um, June 10th at uh, 7 p.m., uh, there's going to be a webinar on the gypsy moth and what's happening this year. I guess there's already quite a number of participants uh, already signed in, but if you go to the OWA website and to their calendar of events, you can register, still register. And then on June 16th, um, the Model Forest, the Eastern Ontario Model Forest, may or may not be having its last annual general meeting. Uh, if you are a member of the Model Forest, uh, we invite you to uh, attend or Please ask you to attend. As I say, it may be our last meeting uh, before we uh, uh, unite with the Ontario Woodlot Association. And uh, those are the two events that I wanted to talk about. Uh, the Model Forest AGM is at 10 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, the 16th of June. Uh, what is the link you for the first one for the moth? Uh, for the moth, it's on the Ontario Woodlot Association website. If you, uh, when you click in there and go to events, you will see it on the calendar on this uh, in yellow on the tenth. 
Thank you very much. Anyone else? Re community engagement or upcoming events? Pat, have you, uh, question to Pat. Have you had a chance to get out to uh, the uh, operation west of Spencerville, the uh, sawmill operation? I have not, but I have spoken with the uh, owner. Yeah, I, they're really busy there. The, uh, anytime I go by, there's at least uh, eight to ten employee cars there. So, and there seems to be activity there seven days a week. Thank you, and uh, I've let uh, some contractors uh, know of uh, the opportunity so that when they're bidding on uh, some of our properties, that there there is a local uh, buyer for the product. Right. Thank you. Before I come down this morning, I was looking at the local newspaper and the, uh, I'm going to get this name wrong, the Thousand Islands uh, Land Trust. Uh, they, they hold about uh, uh, 2,000 acres right now of land that they reforested and uh, they uh, have taken over a property on County Road 42 near Athens. It's over 100 acres. And they're uh, planting there on Saturday and Sunday this week. Uh, didn't say how many trees they were putting in. They were looking for volunteers and volunteers to come in at uh, specified times. Uh, they also mentioned in the article that uh, Wigan Farm Supply, uh, north of Brockwell, had uh, contributed all the machinery they needed for the weekend, as well as $6,000 in cash to support them. So it's, uh, it's outside of our jurisdiction but it's an interesting project to advance our causes. Any other questions, comments? I thank the staff, I thank the committee first of all for the attending the meeting today. And I certainly congratulate and thank the staff for all the work that they've done this spring. Uh, with COVID-19, I don't know whether you're getting more work done, it hasn't slowed down. <laughs> There's no interruption today. So, with that, I need a motion to adjourn. Actually, we have the date of the next meeting. Oh, date here. of the next meeting. Sorry, put my glasses back on. So, our next scheduled meeting is uh, September 7th at 10 a.m. Um, at this point, we're not sure, uh, virtual or in person, but as Angela mentioned um, when she was giving her update through the Conservation Authorities Act changes, I would be interested in he hearing any feedback from the committee. We've uh, been virtual for a year now. Um, and of course, like everyone else, we're trying to find where our new normal will be moving forward. So I'm interested in, uh, in feedback from committee, uh, what you like, what you don't like on the virtual front. Um, you know, do you wanna see some or all continuation of meetings virtually? Do you prefer in person? Do you prefer a combination? We'd like to get a sense of kind of what your feedback and experience has been over the last year as we start looking ahead to as we're able to um, to meet more and more in larger numbers as we hopefully move ourselves out of this pandemic situation. So I would just open it up for any questions, comments um, or suggestions for meeting platforms moving forward. Do I have any questions or comments? Ben. Ben, go ahead. Thanks. Um, just my my opinion. Um, I certainly appreciate the in person meetings, uh, but I also get the value and the convenience of virtual. So if uh, you know if we're looking for an informal po informal poll from the committee members, I'm uh, I'd say a, a combination of the two would be uh, very um, uh, useful in, in my opinion. Anyone else? Doug. Go ahead, Doug. I'm a, I'm a very uh, in-person type of uh, a type of person, but the these uh, and I agree with Ben that perhaps there's a combination uh, for this type of meeting. It's uh, it's well things are well laid out, well documented, and uh, it we don't seem to have uh, too many uh, technical problems. So 
perhaps we should book September as a virtual meeting and then take it from there. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, it's Murray Inch. Go ahead, Murray. Um, I'd just like to say the, the main pro problem I have with the virtual meetings is the poor quality of the audio. In other words, I'm only getting about half to two thirds of what is being said, and I'm missing an awful lot. So I um, incline to vote for actual meetings whenever possible in future. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Feel free um, if you have comments to, to drop me a quick email or give me a call, that's fine as well. Um, one of the things that we, we were considering, um, and it's interesting to hear the combination feedback, is uh, I know sometimes our March meetings can be challenging with the weather, so it might make sense maybe um, during inclement weather possibilities to, to have that virtual option and maybe um, you know, that combination could see us meeting in person uh, more in the spring, summer, fall months. Um, also, hopefully, with the ability to um, gather in the future, we could also look at um, on-site meetings, um, as we, we did with this group in the past, uh, combine a spring-slash-summer tour. It would be nice to be able to get some folks out uh, to our properties again, so we look forward to those opportunities moving forward. But at this point, um, we'll book September for virtual and see uh, where we're at as far as pandemic conditions and um, make a decision closer to the, that date whether or not we're able to host uh, anyone um, in person. But at this point, we'll plan for virtual and uh, let you know. Anyone else? Is it Ben? That was a thumbs up, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a thumbs up. That sounded good. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Uh, I certainly uh, appreciate uh, the in-person meetings. I think it generates, uh, there's more opportunity for discussion, there's more opportunity for people who are allowed to speak up rather than uh, doing it virtually. So uh, a combination, maybe, we could look at that. Francois? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'm uh, I'm good for both, especially in winter time. It's uh, nice to be working from the house. I'm kind of used to it the last 18 months, but uh, uh, the practical uh, meetings are also good, especially when we do tours. So that's a learning part. Yes. Thanks, Ben. Or Francois, rather. Uh, anyone else? Seeing none, we look for a motion to adjourn the Forestry Committee meeting of May 7th, the 1st, February 2021, be adjourned at what time? 11.24. 11.24. Uh, motion? Francois Lard. Francois Lard, thank you very much. We don't need a seconder on that. No. So thanks for coming out. and. Uh, Get your umbrella out, Doug. The rain's coming your way. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Glenn.